Welcome to the Film Garage 208 podcast. My name is Sarah and this is Daniel. Hello. Today we have with us Shannon and Logan, who are the co-principals of Elevate Academy here in Idaho Falls. Welcome. Welcome. All right. Thanks for having us. Yeah. We're excited. So Elevate Academy. Yes. New school. New school. New school. Under construction. We'll be open August of 2024. This year. Oh, wow. Okay. Year, yeah. That's exciting. So you're really close. We're really close. Yeah. Um, in fact, we're right in the middle of student enrollment right now. So wow. we have about 330 spots, grades six through 10. As a charter school, we're kind of, we have 10. to cap our enrollment per sure. grade. So we'll take about 330 students next year. Um, and right now I'd say we're probably right at about half that. But cool. The lo- We have a lottery system. So that lottery will close in April and then we'll um, start enrolling kids for real, like for registration for the next. Okay. Fall. So people don't know if they're actually going to be in it yet. It's just a, it's okay. yeah, it's a lottery okay. system. So, um, anybody can apply for that. If we have more people apply for seats we have available, we do draw, it's a random order kind of thing. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, there's a possibility that there will be a wait list in each grade and that's pretty standard at our other schools. We do have wait lists. Uh, most charter schools, that's kind of the same process. So sure. Okay. okay. So give us the background on you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah you bet. Um, so, so Shannon and I have known each other for a while and I worked with Shannon's husband at my, the last school I worked in. Um, I was an administrator at compass Academy here in Idaho falls, which is like a project based high school in district 91. And, um, I had the opportunity to come visit the very first elevate Academy in Caldwell And, um, just saw what they were doing. The superintendent at the time for district 91 kind of suggested that we go take a look at it. Um, he thought it would be cool to bring something like this to Idle Falls because it serves students that traditionally kind of struggle with, um, the typical big schools and, um, and kids that like to do stuff more hands-on. Okay. So I was kind of blown away by it and I wanted to do it. Um, that's actually what was different about it that caught your attention. Yeah, no, it, it's, um, it's geared around the trades. So, um, you know, the big push I think in the last decade mm-hmm. in high schools has been college, college, got to go to college, yeah. everybody mm-hmm. get college ready. Um, and this school was more about being job ready and we actually call it as a school being next step ready. And so, Okay. Um, we drive, we let the trades, so we'll have eight different trades in our school. We let the trades drive everything. And so we integrate the core standards like math, science, English, social studies okay. through the trades. So hmm. students, the goal is for it's students relevant. to know, Yeah, it's relevant. It's authentic. Um, and so that's what struck out to me the most uh, when I visited is, wow, like they're learn these students are learning real job skills. They're going to be, able- they're going to be very employable, especially in our market right now. We need trades people, we do. Mm-hmm. welders and house builders and carpenters and, um, chefs and all yeah. that kind of stuff. And so I thought it was just a really cool opportunity kind of rethinking what success looks like for kids mm-hmm. is what I noticed. And so we, I came back and COVID actually, that was like the week before <laughs> the world shut down. And that was, a march. while ago yeah yep. march mm-hmm. right at spring break is when everything kind of we never came back that year um oh, okay. and then the following year um i actually uh everything kind of got put on hold with bringing this title falls and i actually um got uh, a job at the district office with shannon um and other people at the school district 91 and um totally different thing but elevate and i kind of the the founders and i kind of stayed in touch and they really wanted to try to expand to this area. And so then I left the school district after that year to start the process of bringing this school here, which is a lengthy, a lot of like, you have to write a charter and yeah, where do, do you even start? Yeah. So the, the charter, so a charter is a, like a 250 page document that you write that describes every detail of your school and how it's going to work, where it's going to be, hmm. all that kind of stuff. Kind of so, like your business plan. Yeah. Kind of like a business plan. Yeah. Everything from, transportation to lunch to curriculum to staff to budget and all that kind of stuff goes into this charter and the cool thing is you you typically you have to get that charter authorized so somebody has to say you're okay to do this idea right to start this Hmm. school most of the time a charter school will um 
the, the law is you have to share that charter with your local school districts. And then they have the opportunity to ask questions. Uh, most of the time they're not interested. Charter schools don't often have a great relationship with local districts just because they pull students hmm. from the districts. And so that's kind of contentious. I mean, a isn't bit. there enough students though? Yeah. Or? But, but again, students are funding, right? So if, if we have a mm. charter school with mm -hmm. 300 kids and there's 300 less students in a district now, um, that's a chunk of money that they don't, you know, they sure. have to, they have to adjust for. Hmm. Um, but, uh, so then the charter school will go to the state charter commission. If their stuff is in order and they have everything ready to go, the state authorizes you to be a charter. So you open, um, kind of on your own and the state monitors your progress and evaluates you. Hmm. Our situation was different. Um, and we're really fortunate district 93 Bonneville school district 93 actually, uh, really liked our idea. They thought it was serving some kids in a way that they couldn't do right now. Um, and so they, they decided to authorize us. So it's really kind of cool. In fact, Shannon and I were just at Bonneville high school this morning, talking to their whole staff. We've been, um, kind of sharing what we're doing with all the staffs at all of the schools in district 93, and they've been super supportive. So coming right in, we have this support of a local district, which is super, uh, super exciting. Yeah. That's and you really weren't cool. expecting that? No, we, well, when I started the project, I was expecting that from district 91. Um, but there was a leadership change in the middle of everything hmm. and the, with the leadership change, it didn't work out, um, to get that authorization from district 91. But, um, you know, it was a surprise to me that district 93 stepped up, but it's been an awesome surprise. And the, the administration in district 93 has been absolutely amazing. They've just, we've created a really good relationship with them and, hmm. um, we're really excited. Uh, they've been really supportive, which is unusual for a district to really support a charter school like that. It seems like they would support it. I mean, I guess when you say it comes down to money, yes. the budget. Well, yeah. And it's what's best for kids, which is probably already a tight budget. It is it, a tight it budget. Is. And I think the unique thing is, um, when districts and charters have typically, you know, don't get along. Um, and really it does come down to funding. Uh, I think what 93 sees, the administration staff, is this group of students, this population, that they don't fit the traditional mold, right? Sit in rows um, for 50 minutes. You know, you need to do problems 1 through 20 in your math book. Yeah. They, they want, there's a group of students out there that they want it to be relevant. They want to know the why behind it, which I would think all of us want that, right? Yeah. And so I think that's what got me excited about um, Elevate, is it was just that I knew it was this group of students that we have been missing in our community for years. And so that's why we're excited. And besides just like assuming that those kids were out there, how did you know that there were these enough students to show the interest for something like this in IF? Sure. So some of our, sorry. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Um, as Logan was talking about, uh, Caldwell was our first school to open mm -hmm. and the founders of the Caldwell Elevate, um, it's not like they were planning on planting all of these elevates across the state of Idaho. Uh, they saw a need for their community as well. And um, they started that school. Well, what ended up happening was they had so many students interested. And of course, they had to cap their enrollment, but their wait list was like 600 students. Wow. And so then the next school to open was Nampa. And that's only like eight miles down the road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Their school is now full with a wait list. Wow. Right. And so they just saw this, this trend. And really, it was community members coming to them saying, hey, what? we need more of this. How can you get this going? Cool. And so then they replaced themselves as administrators and stepped up into this next role of kind of planting these schools. Um, so yeah. when you say, how do you know you're going to fill it? And, and I think <laughs> as, a, yeah. as a high school administrator, like I saw so many kids, smart, capable kids that kind of struggled with getting the grades. And, 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 and unfortunately the way that we, if a student doesn't graduate and go to college, sometimes they, they feel like they failed in some way. Right. Um, but they yeah, would, they would, they would graduate and then college maybe wasn't for them and they'd kind of bounce around and I'd see them working at Walmart or, and, and, and eventually, you know, I think everybody finds their fit, but being able to start that process in sixth grade, like to give kids that confidence, mm -hmm. um, that hands-on experience, like, I, I like to use the example, like there's girls, when we go visit our schools in Caldwell and Nampa, there's seventh grade girls welding. 
like what other That's awesome. chance are we right. going to give That's that amazing. little mm-hmm. girls to get that hands on with stuff? Yeah. They're to be out in the shop, and they're the amazing, saw. right? Yeah. And they don't even know. And and like I use my daughter as an example. She's a seventh grader. She's never going to get the chance to do that based on the 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 way she's going through school right now, um, unless I personally teach her to do something like that, which mm-hmm. I try to do. But yeah, come on, Dad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. let's go, but, Logan. <laughs> but like for real, like. To give every kid the chance, we like to call it discovering kids genius. Like mm-hmm. I really believe that across our eight trades, that kids are going to find their fit in some in the in the kitchen, in the shop, um, in business and marketing and graphic design, medical like all these arts. medical arts, mm-hmm. these programs that we have, um, they're going to find where they fit. And then our model really, once they find that fit, it just it just gears them in that direction so that they graduate and they kind of know what they want to do. Um, That's really cool. They can go into that job. If they are really passionate about like medical assisting that they do with us, maybe they go on for that nursing degree, but they're like hyper-focused. They've learned that, yeah, this is what I want to do. And so they've got that, that goal. So, yeah. and they're not asking the question like, why is this important? Because exactly. they can see right. exactly why. Well, yeah. and I'll just use the example. I, um, on our way in here, I just got off the phone with a dad and he's, and he's super concerned about his son. His son um, is smart, has always gotten A's through school, and now he's hit high school. And like he's failing his biology class is what he used as an example. Hmm. He's like, oh, why do I need to know this? And he's tired of sitting. He's like, but my son rebuilds mountain bikes. And he's, I mean, he's so hands-on and he's wicked smart. I think the dad's an engineer. So they're like, Okay, our kid, like he's got it going on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He has just lost interest in school because he doesn't understand why he has to go through and jump through all the hoops mm-hmm. when he is just a hands on learner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he just wanted to know more about our school. Right. So we sat and we had, you know, probably a 20 minute conversation of, Oh my goodness, this is why haven't we done this before in our community? I think that's the biggest thing we run into when we're when we're sharing this. Mm-hmm. Where was this when it, I was in school? Right, it does Literally, seem though. like Literally. it should just be there. Right. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's definitely a shift in like culture, kind of like you said, like I know like my sister, we have like a six, seven year age gap. Mm-hmm. And like you're always raised with like you go to school, you go to college, you go do this and that. But we're kind of learning now, like that's not mm-hmm. always the next step. Like there's other things you can do now. And that's okay. Yeah. And that's <laughs> yeah. okay. And then yeah. these same kids that are like doing the steps and like not having a good time. Now they're having like internal crises of like, what am I supposed to do? I'm not, I'm failing. I'm not sure. doing what I'm supposed to be doing. But like, that's just set, not, not set things out for us, you know, like, mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. know. I don't know. It no, just gives you more options too. Yeah. Well, and, and I think, the other thing is college can still happen when you're 21. It doesn't have to happen when you're 18. Yeah, true. Um, we have a local um, fabrication company and their CEO actually shared, I he shared this story with some students that were working and I got to be a part of that. Um, he, right out of high school, he, be, he apprenticed as a machinist and um, it was a four year process. So by the time he was 21, 22, he was a, a full-time machinist, loved it. Um, kind of wanted to take the next step and go into mechanical engineering. So he had been working full time, was making really good money as a machinist, like leading his team. Um, and then went back to school while he, while he was still working, Hmm. got his mechanical engineering degree, got kind of promoted within the company, became in charge of a, a big process. Um, and then found out he was really good with managing people. So he went and got his MBA, while he was working wow. mm-hmm. and now he's the CEO of the company wow. and doing very well. <laughs> and he yeah. started as a 17 year old apprenticeship machinist. And so just because students, and he has no debt. Yeah. He's yeah, the winner in the yeah. end. Yeah. Yes. And right. so, yeah. you know, there's not, yeah. we've kind of forced this like traditional route that if you don't go right now, you're just not going to go. Um, and that's yeah. just not the case. And it makes a lot of sense to just get a trade, get a skill, um, save some money, uh, and then, you know, if that opportunity presents itself, that's, that's fantastic. And I think that's where like long-term, I think that's where we'll see our kids going. Um, I think hopefully. that's a good example. Cause I think sometimes when people think of trade, they maybe think, oh, I don't want to do something like labor intensive for the rest sure. of my life, but they don't realize that part of it that you just described in that story where like, there is still room for growth in every career. 
And yeah, there are yeah. ways, and at some point you will have to manage people if you want to get to like a bigger level, mm -hmm. just going to just teach you new things that. Absolutely. And, and like companies like the INL and, um, a lot of the big companies will, will help you pay for that. They want to reinvest hmm. in their people. And so if you get a job as an electrician or, uh, and just labor and you want to kind of progress, um, online education, especially at the higher level is like widespread. You have like Western governors and these really good, good ways to like continue education as you're working. And so, um, yeah, it's really, it really aligns nicely. Um, but our, our, our goal is to, to build that foundation right first. So you said it's sixth through 10th grade. Yep. If you come in at in eighth grade, is that possible? Or do you have to start at the beginning with the school for Great like the question. sake of the courses? Yeah. So, um, you start wherever. So we'll have the, the father I was just talking to, um, his son will be a sophomore next year. And so he will come Towards in the and, end. yep. Mm -hmm. um, and then, but and it's still worth it for him. Mm -hmm. Like it's still, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So grades six through eight, uh -huh. the students will experience all eight trades for about five weeks, which six how awesome eight. just to be a well-rounded student. Yeah. At that what point. are those eight? Yeah, that's a good question. So, um, welding, machining, um, construction, culinary arts, cybersecurity, medical arts, uh, and business, public safety and business marketing. Cool. Hmm. And public safety is huh. like criminal justice, public safety. So we, it's really cool. Like th we've hired eight teachers in these areas and they're all from industry. Like mm -hmm. most of them don't have any teaching experience. Like our public safety <laughs> teacher is a parole officer here in our community. Yeah, That's great. So, yeah. and so our, they're going to get very honest yeah, advice. And our, and our, our construction teacher, yep. <laughs> our construction teacher is, he's been in the construction industry for 20 plus years super good guy, coaching background. Um, we bring everybody out to our schools in Nampa and Caldwell so they can see it because mm -hmm. it's so different. And he, he's just fully bought in. So we're super excited to get these really career people that are passionate about their trades, but they're, they want kids in the trades. Right. And mm -hmm. so they're the perfect link, um, to get our kids set up for success. Well, and even what we have found, um, through the interview process for our teachers, as far as like English teachers and math teachers, um, history teachers, a lot of them who have gravitated toward us have a background or they were non-traditional in education. So one of our math teachers, um, worked at Boeing as a machinist many hmm. years ago. And so what is nice about that in their classroom, they'll have that immediate tie in with the trades, right? Sure. They'll be able to speak that, mm -hmm. um, we have an English teacher who welded for years. So we've got all these different non-traditional tie-ins. Um, our goal is that we have an adult, um, at that school that every kid can have a relationship with, right. That they connect with on some level. Sure. So even if they don't connect with me, they'll connect with the math teacher. <laughs> mm -hmm. or, sure. Uh, <laughs> Taylor, can I just go out to the shop class? Yeah. All yeah, right. bud, you can, uh -huh. <laughs> let's mm -hmm. get you out there. Mm -hmm. We love yeah. shop rats. Yeah. <laughs> we want the, we want the kids that want to be in the shop all day. Um, those are the kids that thrive with us. They love to use their hands and have projects going. Yeah. Yeah. So back to kind of like the topic of money, how, it, it's a smaller school, right? Like right. the amount of students, but for trade gear, there's probably a lot of expensive equipment. So how do you, yeah. how does the school go about that? Is it? No, that's a good question. So we we're fortunate, um, around here, we have a ton of industry support. So we have a lot of, and I, I've been spending the last couple of years during this process, like making connections in the industry. So hmm. first we have jobs for kids and there's so many jobs available, but the other thing is asking for help. Like we do, we have applied for several um, the grants. The state of Idaho has made uh, a lot of money available for CTE stuff, which is awesome. Um, career, to have tech career tech education. Career tech education. You're not adding like a welder to their <laughs> list of school supplies. No. For, right. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, if we could expect that. Yeah. But like, for example, um, awesome. Spudnik, the big, um, they, they make spud harvesting equipment, right? Down hmm. in Blackfoot. Okay. Uh -huh. Just really good guys. We met them early on and they've been really supportive. Um the other day, our bosses called and said, "Hey, you guys need to go buy a forklift because we're gonna uh, have all this because we're gonna have all this stuff off. coming in. So go find the good deal on a forklift." So <laughs> we like called around, like I don't even know what they cost. Twenty five thousand. Like, what's my, yeah, what's my budget? Forklift. What's my budget? <laughs> and so we found one for like thirty grand. And then I was like, "What am I doing?" And I called Spudnik. I'm like, "Hey, uh, I need a forklift. Do you guys, where do you guys get your forklifts?" And they're like, "We'll just give you one." I'm like. 
Yeah. Seriously? And they're like, yeah, when do you need it? And I'm like, well, we'll like the first week of May done, we'll, we'll just bring it up. Just tell us when you need it. We'll give you one of ours. Wow. So like that kind of stuff is like huge. Yeah. The Home Builders Association, they've been amazing and so supportive. Um, and they gave us a $25,000 donation wow. so we can buy shop equipment, right? Saws so- and tools. And, and then my favorite one is DeWalt, mm-hmm. you know, DeWalt tools. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So their rep came and visited our school in Nampa, Nampa and loved it. And they... And, and I mean, they have a little extra interest because the, the tools that our kids use are the tools that they're going to go buy when they right. show up. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So mm-hmm. they gave our shop teacher in Nampa, our construction <laughs> teacher, a $10,000 shopping spree at their local DNB supply in Nampa. Wow. And everything was at um, wholesale costs. So he went and got nice. to spend 10 grand on everything he That's wanted. That's so fun. Then, he was like a kid in a candy store. Well, it, it gets better. So then DeWalt's like, well, well, we'll do that for East Idaho too when they open. Great. Well, then one of our, uh, one of our, our East Idaho home builders Mm -hmm. people came on a tour and I told him that story and he's like, Oh no, well I'm, I'm friends with the Milwaukee rep. (laughs) So then he reached (laughs) out to the Milwaukee (laughs) rep, the Milwaukee rep heard about this and like, Oh, you know, we're going to turn that shop red instead of yellow. (laughs) Uh And so Milwaukee gave us, well, just like the day after they came and visited, they gave us $5,000, which we let our new construction teacher spend. Yeah. And they said, but it's the end of the fiscal year. So when you guys start, we'll give you another 10,000 or whatever DeWalt's doing, we'll give you more. And then DeWalt's now nice it's like this healthy competition, yeah, we'll right? Take but, it. but the kids yeah, win, win, right? Yeah. Like the kids are winning and it's, it's cool. Yeah. And, and it's not like one of them is pulling back because the other one's no. involved. No, right? they love it. They, mm-hmm. they want to help out and we'll have a red and yellow shop. That's fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, the, the key is like, like you're saying, it is expensive. That stuff's expensive. And so hopefully, um, especially if you're learning and breaks, <laughs> Oh yeah. Like how many right? broken yeah. drill bits are you about to have? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's yeah. So <laughs> and, true. and that's the thing when we hire teachers, we're like, all right, how, like, I know you can teach this, but how comfortable are you fixing it when it breaks? Cause mm. it, it will. And, uh-huh. and, and then that's again, where we can call our friends in the industry and say, Hey, will you guys come take a look at our plasma table or whatever? And, um, so yeah, a lot of support and we, we still are looking for tons of support. Like we, everybody we talk to, we actually let, um, some of these businesses that have helped us out, we, we name classrooms after them. Cool. So the, there so will you'll be see a, a big DeWalt sign above a classroom, mm-hmm. like you're in the DeWalt DMB supply in Milwaukee and, I love it. uh, Spudnik will have their sign up in our shop cause they gave us a forklift and, Right. Uh, that kind of stuff. So, but we're still looking for more. So yeah. I'm like, oh, there's yeah, always room. To donate. Always love <laughs> lots of classroom names. And yep. it's not just it's not just about like donation. I don't like the word donation. Of course, every wow. school loves donations. I look at it as an investment. Like sure, they're it's a investing. They're mm-hmm. investing into the the future people they can hire from our program. For sure, and that's what we want. Yeah. We want more than giving us some welders come in and talk to our students, um, invite our students onto your job site to show them what you're doing so they can start preparing to get jobs with you. I mean, yeah, that is a huge money saver for them. If they know they have people coming for the next, yep. however long yeah. the school's around. Right. Well, and it saves them training time as yeah. well. And right? they can really trust smart. the training. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, well, that's that really cool. Sense for- so, Yeah. What does a typical day look like for a student there? Yeah. So it will start at eight o'clock. One thing that is different is we don't go off of a bell schedule. So we start the day at um, eight and we end at three 30, but throughout the day, the teachers are making the schedule and they're inviting the students. So they'll have it on their Google calendar. Hmm. What we like about that is we don't want to be tied in again to that rigid 50 minute. I go from here. I go from here. You're like waiting for the clock. Well, right. So, I Hmm. mean, it, it could be, they could even change it that day if something's taken longer out in the shop, right? So they're communicating with each other. Logan had mentioned um, going out into the community when stuff is going down, like if somebody is getting ready to pour concrete or they're getting ready to frame and we want our students in the construction class to go see that, well, we have our own transportation system. We had a, received a grant for buses and so nice. we have our own bus fleet. Can I call it a fleet? It's four buses. Four, I'd say that's fleet. That's a yeah, fleet. Yeah, it's a fleet. Yeah. All right. That's a, that's a fleet for sure. Fleet. Um, <laughs> anyway, so our goal is that we want to do lots of trips out into out into the community yeah. for students to just see what it looks like. I mean, they want to experience the hands-on, but then what does it look like on a larger scale? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, that's really like, interesting with the Google Calendar and that you can just like adjust your schedule. Yeah, it's 
it's a, it's kind of a doozy for teachers too. They're like, what? Yeah. Like I don't, well, when's my prep? Like when's my, when's the, is it an hour per class? So it's like whatever you want it to be. Is it based on like, like you do have to collect all the students at the same time for that class? Like, yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So like to give you an example, like mm -hmm. seventh grade, the kids, there's probably 66, uh, we'll have 66 seventh graders, but they'll be split between four teachers. So about 15 kids per class. Mm -hmm. okay. So, um, let's call those groups A, B, C, and D. They split them into four equal groups. Mm -hmm. And this is up to the teachers. The A's could start with math for an hour. The B's would go to English for an hour. The C's to social studies and the D's, maybe they're with the kitchen that week. So they're in the, and then that would rotate through the first four hours of the day if they choose to do it like that. Um, later in the day, they might have the option for some kids to go into the weight room. We'll have a really nice weight room in our school um, to give kids that physical release and give them some PE time. Hmm. Um, another teacher might choose to invite a smaller group back with them where they're doing some intervention, some reading strategies or some extra help in the area that they need. Um, the kitchen teacher might pull back kids throughout the week to, to do extra work on certain things or catch up. And so but it's totally up to the teachers how that day looks. Right. They, they like know, as an English teacher, I might want to like do an extension and a book study. Right. And so we may, I may have a group of like 10 students. And so maybe on Tuesdays and Thursdays from two to three, I'm going to do a book study in my room. So it's really organic um, and really what the students need. Hmm. Again, our biggest focus, you know, Logan and I joke about, well, when's my prep hour? Because as a high school teacher, it's like I teach first and second, third hour is my prep hour, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Yeah. I'm like, well, we just want to make sure we're available for students. And so we're not going to have necessarily a carved out prep time. So our focus is more student focused than um, a traditional bell schedule that works for the front office and for teachers. Sure. And, and I think it's important to add, we're a mastery based school. Mm -hmm. So kids are, we believe every kid's on their own timeline. So when they have mastered a hmm. standard, if they're, if they're a whiz in math and they're cruising through math stuff, then maybe they don't need to be in math every day for this amount of time. Maybe they have shown mastery in these standards and they can then use the rest of their time in an area that they need more help in, or maybe they want to be out in the shop more. And so that's why we have that flexible scheduling because traditional bell schedules are what's best for teachers and adults because it's easy to plan. It's yeah. easy to know where people are, but it's really not what's best for kids. Mm -hmm. Kids. I mean, you think about, we have e split even amount of time on four subjects. Well, I, I struggled in, um, uh, math more than I did in English. I could write a paper, but I, I had some harder time in math, but I still had even amount of times in every class. And so I think it goes to that, <clears throat> that mastery based is what we're, what we're doing. And so it kind of, the flexible scheduling is a big piece of that. Well, and why punish a student? I mean, I remember sitting through a class where I'm like, oh, I know this. But <laughs> sure. I was also, you know, a rule follower. So I sat and I still dutifully did what I needed to do. Mm -hmm. But uh, back to that, um, why this school exists is because we have some students who are tired of sitting there or they haven't been given the why. And yeah. so giving them the flexibility to be more in charge of their own learning as well. Mm -hmm. um, by the time they reach their junior and senior year, they will be creating their schedule and they will let the English teacher know, okay, I'm going to be out in the shop for the morning, but then am I good to come in and work with you from one to two or whatever? Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Yep. It's really fun to watch that work. We were there huh. last a couple weeks ago and <clears throat> we had a kid that really wanted to be in the shop. Was this how they did it in Caldwell? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. He really wanted to be in the shop. And we were to, at Nampa. If you we were at Nampa. Ago. He wanted to go well. He had his car in the, and they have a, uh, industrial mechanics and he wanted to go put brakes on his car and he hadn't finished his English paper. <laughs> and so the shop teachers, like we use that to our advantage, right? She, she's like, you know, I'd love to have you out here, but Mr. So-and-so, uh, really needs that English paper turned in. Hmm. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> and I loved it. It was just like, I'll go do it. Yeah, it's fine. And so again, we he went back, wrote the paper, worked with the teacher, showed mastery and whatever they were doing so that he had that time in the shop. And so, you know, it's not, we, we it's act, not a punishment. Yeah, it's not a, yeah. Hey, did you get that done? Make sure you get that done. And then, yeah. Awesome. Love to have you back out here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so with your descripting, I'm thinking of like a college campus. Mm -hmm. Is there like a time when they're not with a teacher? Like they have time alone to like do that paper or are they sitting in the class with the teacher 
and then having to complete the paper then? So it kind of varies. I think there's, there's some, especially in the high school age, there's some flexible time. When we have students that are, uh, Sorry. So yeah, I'll take a drink. Take a drink. Yeah, take a drink. Why don't you take a drink? Take a drink. Take a drink. Like, and I'll talk out. about <laughs> the design of the school. Yeah. So I'm not you have let him you, drink this whole time. Yeah. You have classrooms on on both sides, right? And so okay. you kind of have a man door, but then you have these big garage doors, so the teachers can open them. The hallway area really is just an extension of the learning space, hmm. and so a lot of times you'll walk through. So when you're saying, do you have any kids that um, just have downtime? Yeah. Do they have to be in the classroom or the right? paper you'll see these groups of students just kind of scattered about and it almost looks like what are all these kids doing out in the hall yeah what that's traditionally what we would say yeah. right yeah. um but that's they're that's what they're doing they're working um just kind of in small groups or they're just working individually hmm. a lot of times if the teacher has the uh, garage door open they can see the students working or we don't necessarily have traditional teacher desks we just have this rolling podium so they can kind of cruise around the room. Mm, and so a lot okay. of times they'll set it up that it's right there at the classroom blending into the hallway, right? So you have all this learning space taking place for the students, yeah. but they don't have to be sitting right in Mr. Johnson's English class, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. In fact, if they have a better relationship with the math teacher and they want to keep writing on their paper, go down there and do it. Hmm. We don't care where you're at just yeah. as long as you're engaged in your learning. Yeah. It's much more real world relevant. Like in yeah. the real world, you can go ask for other opinions mm -hmm. and go talk to right. different people. And and, sure. and in the real world, you schedule yourself, right? Like yeah. you, you plan where you're going to be for the day. Like that's the first thing I look at before I go to bed. I look at my calendar for the next day. Yeah. And then the first thing I, uh, throughout the day, I'll be like, where are we next? Yeah. Um, and we really want our students to get those skills um, before they leave because yeah, those are good. Um, and the other true. thing I was going yeah. along with that is like by senior year, we really want them out of the building. By that senior year, if they're in construction or welding, we'll we'll have them with us for part of the day to make sure they're getting the standards they need um, to graduate. Uh, but we really want them in an apprenticeship or an internship. And so we have a lot of students that are able to go out and with our flexible scheduling um, which they probably love. Oh yeah. That. And they're making money, yep. right? Like they're Oh, in, they get paid well. They get paid yep paid for school which is super cool <laughs> that's so, awesome so yeah. yeah that's um and that's the other thing going into the business so i was a business teacher in business and marketing um, we have something called elevate industries so each each program within our school will um take on work and produce work for for sale so for example um Right now, the the welding kids in Nampa are working on some metal framed legs that I'm planning to attach to some really thick board to make benches for a yeah. fire pit. Cool. So I sent them the dimensions of the board and said, these are really heavy, big planks. Um, I need some fabricated metal um, legs that I can screw into the bottom, then flip them around and make benches. Um, and so they are like working on it and bending metal <laughs> and cutting <laughs> it and grinding it and welding it and uh they What's should cool actually we, yeah they're we, almost we done go over a lot right so, so we we're bringing them. teachers <laughs> and so we get to they they always want to do a catch up and you know here's where we're at and how does it look what I do love you think that. Yeah, yeah they're gonna paint it and then the machining kids um in caldwell are building a cribbage board for me on one of their haas machines and so but they'll build sheds and dog houses and construction the culinary arts kids cater lunches they do cakes cool. and cupcakes and cookies um and so, yeah, we, and, and the cool thing is we can pay the kids for that. Mm -hmm. um, if they're 16 hmm. and they're working in those programs, once they're 16 years old, they become an employee of Elevate Industries. And I think we have it set up as like an LLC within the school. Yeah. And so any income that comes in, any profit is split into, uh, there's reinvestment into the program. And then the students get about a 60% cut of the profits at the end of the year, the ones that worked. Wow. And so they kind of have a, like a clock in clock out system where they're working on it. So you have some kids, they'll come in on a Saturday or on a Friday, Friday's kind of, hmm. um, a different day. So back to that schedule question, Yeah. um, Friday is only eight to one and really it's a invitational. So we go down to um, a smaller staff and smaller student population. And it's for those students who need to get caught up or they want that extension or they just want to work out in the shop or work on their current project that they're working on. Hmm. It's a cool way to keep it's kids motivated. Yeah. yeah. And at the end of the year, like they get checks for all the work they put in. So last year, 
the graphic design kids in Caldwell did the best. They got like a shirt order of like a thousand t-shirts to make for some big, uh, 5k or something. And so they made a, a nice profit. And so the kids were getting six, seven, eight hundred dollar checks at the end of the year. Wow. Which is pretty special. Yeah. That's yeah. exciting. For going yeah. to school. For going to school. So, <laughs> that's so cool. And they earned it. I mean, that's the thing. Like they earned it. Like and it's they, not just free and work. They saw they saw the fruits of their labor. Yeah. Are you familiar? I went to Meridian High School and mm -hmm. towards the end of my time there, they built a, a welding shop. Are you familiar with that yes. building? Yes. What's different from like that school and testing, I guess, versus your school that would be strictly trade. Yeah, no, that's good. Like question. straight focus. I guess. So, um, yeah. You, so most big districts have these programs, right? They have CTE programs like welding and construction or and all auto that. body, um, mm -hmm. auto body, like district 91 has one. It's in the downtown C tech. It's called district 93 has technical careers. Um, the difference, uh, really between the two is, Typically in a big district, that's a program. So it's, you probably went to Meridian High for your classes and mm -hmm. then maybe took an elective there. Correct. There's like one class. It's right. like one. So you'd yeah. go over and that's how they do it in district 91. Uh, like our kids, mm -hmm. Shannon and I both have juniors in high school right now uh -huh. and they both take industrial mechanics down at SeaTech. So they're mm -hmm. in, they're in their regular high school throughout the day. Then they go over and do that class at the end of the day. Um, and so th that's usually how CTE programs work in large districts. The difference is our school is we, we start in sixth grade, so that's unusual. And we're an all-inclusive thing, so we do it all. So we it's do the fully, trades, integrated. fully integrated. So when he yeah. talks about welding being an elective, mm -hmm. where you don't even call them electives, the CTEs, those trades, drive the learning. And so then the math teacher is meeting their math standards through whatever project they're doing in culinary or in construction or in welding. Does sure. that make sense? Absolutely. So yeah, it's, it's full, those, fully integrated. Yeah, yeah, I took a welding class and then a culinary class. Yep. And both were like that, mm -hmm. where you, it was just a portion of the day, but it didn't tie into anything else. It right. was just its own thing. So to give you an example, um, a year ago, I was in the culinary class. It was seventh grade. So the math class mm -hmm. was doing fractions. That was their standards they were learning. They were learning it through culinary. And one of their tests was they had to make one cookie and they had to show, okay. right? So the kids- Break down the recipe. Right, so the kids mm -hmm. Googled recipes for, that would make 36 cookies, and then divide everything in the, divide two eggs by 36. <laughs> like, how do you do that? Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was really fascinating, because they're like, well, an egg, like if you just get the white part, and then I start, oh, so we gotta beat the eggs first, mm -hmm. then we gotta put them in a measuring tube that actually can break it down to a milligram level. Oh my gosh. And we gotta, two eggs is, 300 milligrams. So we got to divide 300 by 36 and then we got to eye drop out just the, you know, so it's super, a well, they probably don't math. even realize that what is. they're doing. Yes. Yeah. They're doing yeah. math. So complex. Right? And so at the end they, they made, they got one thirty sixth of an egg, <laughs> uh, one thirty sixth of a cup of sugar or whatever it was yeah. and tried to make one cookie. And did it but work? I, for some of them, it definitely didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it was gross. Um, and that's the thing, like that's learning, right? Yeah. Like, we want to create that environment where kids fail a ton because uh -huh. mm -hmm. if they're failing with us, failing is learning, right? Yeah. Like we love it when we call it cognitive conflict. Yep. When you get to that point where you face a problem and it's just hard, right? Well, and you I can't saw the figure look on it out. Of, yeah. On your face when you're like, one, one, yeah. one thirty-six. That's cognitive like, conflict. Like, that is so much like, math. I already yeah. know. It's right. right. Like, even it, splitting it. I've like, like half the third. recipe before, yeah. but I right, mean, right, right. right. But if they're writing yeah. that out, and then at the end, if they can show that math, whether it worked or not, or if they can show why it didn't work, that's yeah. even better. Um, versus doing a worksheet with forty fraction problems. Yeah. yeah. Like, what it? What's more yeah. authentic? Right. And so it's it's fun to watch, and then like in construction, you see math everywhere area circles you see a perimeter, a mm -hmm. perimeter um Angles, uh, trigonometry all, all math like it's all yeah. math yeah. yeah yeah machining welding uh, heat and pressure and welding is all those science standards are there um so yeah we we're very creative with how we slip in what they should know into like super engaging fun things so are you coming up with like the program like what things they're going to build because you know that's going to be like yeah. The perfect yeah. math problem. Kind of. So we let our teachers kind of, we let our CTE teachers come up with a project they think they can do with that age group. Okay. So for example, seventh graders, they just built Pinewood Derbies in construction or actually okay. they're CO2 
they're kind of like pine nice. but they're shot with CO2. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Those are cool. So they knew they were going to do that. And then we hire, we've hired some amazing teachers. Then we let the teachers come in and do the, do the art of teaching is what I call it. Like they go, okay, you're going to be cutting out these blocks of wood. We can do measurement. Um, we're going to be racing cars. We can do speed, velocity. We can do time rate, all that kind of stuff. Argumentative essay on who's you yeah. know, talking them into which design is best and why. Per- sure. Persuasive okay. essay mm-hmm. on why my car is the best. <laughs> um, in in uh, in history, we're going to talk about the Industrial Revolution and the Model T and how the the assembly line changed automobiles because it's related to what they're doing. Yeah. Um, in science, we might talk about like where did this wood come from, like um, some ecology, right. some standards like that. And so we let the teachers really get to be artists. We don't have a curriculum. We don't have textbooks. We don't tell teachers what they need to teach. We have the state standards and we let our teachers figure out how to integrate those into cool so hands-on things. So highly so innovative and creative, right? Do you have traditional testing? Yeah, we do the same state tests that every school does, the ISAT testing. But I will say it's, that's not a focus. Yes, we need to do that. Um, but I always say it's such a small measurement in time yeah. of what a student truly knows. And so we we will still do that. Um, our goal, though, is really to focus on growth of our students. So not whether they got a certain score. Um, are you growing? Are you continuing to grow? Do you know more? And can you do more today than what you were able to do when you showed up yesterday? Yeah. Mm-hmm. If so, we're going to celebrate that. And right? are you motivated to keep doing it? Yeah, yep. exactly. Yep. And to keep coming yeah. back. And the, the state tests are a big deal. I mean, everybody has to do them, but that's not how we define success. That's really what it comes down to. Sure. And so we're putting our time and energy into, yeah. into those, into those skills. That's how we define success and job readiness. Do they do testing before they come to your school? So you can track um, these yeah, things or we can, level? when they come to us, we can look up their previous test scores and stuff. Oh, okay. And that's again, yeah. going back to what Shannon said, the growth that we can measure, um, but like SATs, like every junior in the state is required to take the SAT. We'll do that. And we feel like our we're we're still teaching the same things. Like we're um we're not making the test scores the the indicator of whether we're winning or losing. Mm-hmm. We're making the growth and the the hands-on skills that I is, would be curious to see though the the results from that. Yeah, like and, just, and it's great. It's our growth is really but. yeah, our no, it is. And and our schools are doing fine. Um since I we think kinda, the biggest thing also, um, as far as testing, if you're thinking of like the daily tests, like a, a math test or whatever, really where that mastery base comes in, we know that they're proficient in those math standards or um, in writing. Is are they able to teach it to others? Are they able to apply it? Right? How does this apply out in the shop? I mean, it's one thing to know fractions, but mm-hmm. then can you break down a recipe? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, yeah. So yeah. really, I look at it. Mastery based learning really is that higher level learning than even your traditional textbook define and just regurgitate information. Mm-hmm. Are you able to apply it? Yeah. Because yep. just because you have that knowledge and you're able to um, produce it on an exam, mm-hmm. what does that do if you don't know how it applies when you're going out. Right. And how much something. of that book knowledge really just do you lose after school also, if sure. it's not something that you've been able to like make that connection with that yep. it's like important mm-hmm. and matters. Exactly. Right. And it is about those connections. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. a good point. So yeah. how you mentioned that you're like pretty full on students right now. Well, we're getting there. We're getting there. We still have room for more. Uh-huh. Um, we are doing an open house next week, next Wednesday, the 28th at Rocky Mountain Middle School from 6 to 8. Okay. So if families in our community um, want to know more about it, or we'll just be there to kind of give them an overview and um, just available for Q&A. Mm-hmm. Kind of like the stuff we're telling you today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah, that would be one night. We're we have a pretty big uh, lot on social media. We do on Facebook and Instagram, and our followership is kind of going up. Um, Shannon and I, and then we have uh, Celeste is our uh, administrative assistant that's helping us right now. Um, we canvas neighborhoods every week. Oh wow! So we actually walk <laughs> around Ammon and door to door, talking to people. Um, getting chased by dogs. I'm sure. We're leaving a lot of note cards. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you it's hear funny. them behind the door, right? You're and, like, and it's like, like just hello. leave a note card. <laughs> what are people's first reactions when they hear Elevate Academy? Um, I think so. If they don't know about you. Right. Yeah. No, that's a good question. So 
a big reaction that I hear over and over. Where was this when my kids? Right. I like, want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> and where was this when I was going to school? Yeah. yeah. And I wish I, I know someone. And so that's what we mm-hmm. said. Even if your kids are already grown and gone, still spread the news. Right. I mean, because you you know of one student in your life that would have benefited actually probably more probably a lot more you need yeah. to start an elevate academy adult edition where right. the kids once right. they are done i know they so, teach so the many have come they're like well if you need some help i'm like well I'll always take yeah, volunteers right uh-huh. now but they just want to come play in the shop I yeah think. i want yeah. to weld i want to use a plasma cutter yeah. <laughs> i think one of the things that i hear a lot is oh i what's tuition people ask oh, like, yeah that's a good question and, and the word charter school kind of, I think there's a huge misconception with what charter schools are in Idaho. In Idaho, all charter schools are public schools. So it is free. Hmm. Um, the only thing that's different about a charter is that they have to have some sort of area of emphasis. Ours is trades um, and, uh, you know, trade, trade-based learning. Um, and they have to have, uh, they, they have to be um, authorized, right? But they are free public charter schools. In other states, the word charter means different things. Yeah. So it's mm-hmm. not like you can compare us to um, Texas. Like there are private charter schools and other, there are no private charter schools in Idaho. There's mm-hmm. private schools, but we are a free public school. And so, um, so that's then a misconception. They get People yeah. are, oh, no, that could, is exciting. And we have, yeah. and we have yeah. busing and we have, and you could get paid. <laughs> and we have, right. we have a school lunch program. I mean, uh-huh. like we have all the things that any school would have. And so, um, to me, that's like a kind of a hurdle. I think there's a really, like I, there's another charter school that's was planning to be built down the road from ours. And it was on East Idaho news that the town kind of tried to block it. And so I'm reading the comments and I'm not a commenter. I don't, I the just, comments I are nasty yeah, around here. Oh my but, goodness. But just reading through the comments, it was like, oh man, people, they really don't understand what a charter there's, school there is. There is a misunderstanding out there. And I, and I for sure. you can't get yeah. in and like, explain Like that. they were under the impression of the private charter. Yeah. Paying that, for it. Paying for it. Um, this, that the taxpayers are getting taxed more to have this school. And yeah, mm-hmm. it's just the, the, yeah. So, I mean, there's just a ton of misunderstanding. And so yeah. we just really try to have a lot of conversations with people. And um, when, you know, we, we, we had a, uh, at the parade of homes, we had a mm-hmm. booth and we had a lot of people come through that were really mad at the state of education or kind of, you know, it's a, that's an yeah, interesting conversation. Interesting Tell words. You about I don't know it. what rating this podcast is. Right. So. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we can always cut anything out. Right. So, you know, just giving us the, just giving us the uh, language of what they think about is public education. Uh-huh. But uh, I think that's one thing like we're and trying you're to stuck at a booth. So you have to yeah, listen. No, I'm like, yep. oh, just, just go away, man. <laughs> just go away. No, it's all good. So, you know, not everybody's going to love you, but I think we're, I tell people we're batting a thousand. When we talk to people, people get it. Like they get it. Like this is good. Mm-hmm. Um, this is going to help kids. And, and to me, it's, it's like the long term community of this area is going to benefit from this 100 percent. skilled trade is this huge need mm-hmm. we have kids that are dropping out because they need something different and so we really hope to be that fit on both sides yeah well and we invite community members i know i say that tongue-in-cheek of having them come play in the shop mm-hmm. but we really want people coming in mm-hmm. to talk to our kids and really to pour into our kids and then for our students also to pour into their community and yeah. take ownership of their community and pride in their community. And so really, really excited for the opportunity for Idle yeah. Falls. Yeah, that's yeah. really exciting. So you said it's going to be officially open August, August 12th mm-hmm. is the first day for students. First day of school? First day of school, yep. August That's 12th. exciting. Yeah. Yep. We have uh, almost 25 teachers hired. Okay. So we're super excited solid about crew. The yes. solid crew, amazing so people. How do you guys know at your level to like your teachers are ready for the year since there's not a traditional curriculum? No, that's, that's a great question. That's a great question. <laughs> we'll tell do you. We know? We'll tell you in August. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll call so you back. <laughs> I had the opportunity to help Nampa. Nampa started last year. It was our first year. And so, um, I was, I'm, I was on staff. I was the only staff member for that year but I spent a lot of time in Nampa kind of helping them get going as a school. And that was one of the big things that I learned um, is that the teachers, though they talk a good game, they weren't ready for that. They weren't ready for this wild new plan of where they didn't have something ready to go. And so one of the things that we've done Mm -hmm. for our teachers is we've kind of planned out their first five five weeks weeks of school so that they have something where they're ready to go, where they don't have to have the stress of planning all that. But as they're doing that, 
they can kind of, and we've given them some extra time to, uh, plan out what, what it's going to look like after that. So kind of putting some training wheels on, I guess you could kind of say, yeah. sure. because yeah. you know, as good as I think we have amazing teachers, but that's just a lot to ask. So yeah. we're trying to make it a lot easier for them to get going. Well, and um, we also have the benefit of being the fourth school. And so the learning management system is where um, all of those projects are housed at the other schools. Mm. And so our teachers will have access to that. And so they can kind of look at different projects yeah. and they can either take it and just use it. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's not stealing. It's like, yeah, I've already put blood, sweat and tears in this. Please Do it. use it, you know, <laughs> yeah. um, or it can just get you know, what their appetite and get their wheels turning yeah. for what they want to do. <clears throat> no, that makes sense. So. And we bring them to, we're bringing all of our teachers over in March for a two day training with our existing cool. teachers. So they build relationships with That's people good. that they're doing the same thing as, and then they just kind of start learning the language, seeing how it's going to work. So yeah. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's That's interesting because really cool. it's such a unique thing. If I, someone told me I had that much freedom as a teacher, I, I wouldn't know exactly kind of where to or start. Or even as a student, yeah. too. It, it's like, yeah. oh, my gosh. Sure. And it is a little intimidating. In fact, one of the things we have found, we've interviewed and met with tons and tons of teachers. Um, yeah, at least over, 100. Yeah, over the last, you know, six, eight months. Well, starting like trying this to summer. find the right fit. And, and really, it comes down yeah. to, I mean, when some are just scared, like, Oh yeah, there's no way. And they're great teachers mm. in their traditional role where sure. they're at, right? Mm -hmm. And so usually when we get a teacher who they start lighting up when we talk about stuff, <laughs> yeah. like create your own schedule. Yeah. Uh -huh. No, you're not going to have a set planning time. Instead of fear in and their this, eyes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they get excited. I'm like, uh -huh. ooh, yeah, that's you're, our, you're our crazy people. Well, we need you. <laughs> and the other factor is we have tough kids. Like we we're bringing, sure. we're like, specifically requesting kids that have struggled. Mm -hmm. So when you do that, you get some kids that are tougher to deal with the kids that are going to tell you to F off to your face, mm -hmm. you know? And so we, we do mm -hmm. that in interviews and then we bring them, we bring them before we hire teachers, we bring them to the school and we love it when there's like a, like the other day we brought out four or five teachers and we're walking oh. through the high school hall and a girl like sprints down the hall and starts bleep, bleep, bleep in another girl. And, <laughs> and the teacher jumps up and gets between them. And then another teacher from the other class, hears what's going on. So he comes over and watches the other teacher's class while that teacher takes because the other girl the away. Doors are like, open. <clears throat> so all these teachers here, they handle the situation perfectly, uh -huh. but it's ugly, right? Like mm -hmm. there's something going on and it's not good. Yeah. Um, but we're, I'm like sitting back, like, okay, how are our kids, how are our teachers going to react? If yeah. somebody's scared right now, they're not, they're not with us. And yeah. you know, it was good to watch that because that's the reality because mm -hmm. kids come from all kinds of different stuff. They've got stuff going on in their lives that. It's you know, like the reality of just the yeah. world, the real yeah, world. I mean, mm -hmm. and so, you know, <laughs> you after can't that, manage everyone's mm -hmm. emotions. After that, we had one teacher say, you know, I'm good. I'm going to stay. <laughs> I'm like, that's, but that's good. But that's what we want. That's yeah. a win for us. Just right? say you're out now. Yep. I'd, rather have, <laughs> I'd rather have them say that. Yeah. And, and the other ones are like, yeah. oh yeah, that, that's no big deal. It happens to me every day. I'm like, yeah. Well, okay. Oh, okay. But. Sounds good. <laughs> so after the, other, the argument was over, you tipped her a five and you're like, yeah, good, good job. Good job. Help us keep that one up. <laughs> we, we joked about do that. That's like, a good idea. That was, that was, it's like that was almost staged. It's actually genius. Pair. I should do that. Um, you should. <laughs> and what, I think what's neat is that we've had the opportunity to be going over these schools to watch some of those kids totally flip. Right. Oh, yeah. So where sure. they weren't successful in school. And so they kind of came in initially with an edge and mm -hmm. an attitude or whatever. I mean, after a while, and Logan had said it earlier, they discover their genius or they discover what they're really good at. And it bleeds over to other areas of their life. Yeah. Well, now so these kids are some of the kids that are giving tours. Yeah. That's awesome. At their campus. And you would not guess that they we were a kid a, that yeah. called you an effing mother mm -hmm. at the beginning of the year. We all. had a kid fight the first week. <laughs> last week got kicked out for fighting got back on the wait list, got back in. And now he's the kid that gives you tours. Wow. Uh, he saw the, he looks in your he was, eye, shakes saw, your hand. Saw what he was missing. Wow. And he's totally changed his style for everything. I mean, like he's an, I, I actually want him or uh, there's a couple, there's a lot of stories like that in schools. We're working on getting one of the students in Nampa and Caldwell to come talk at our ribbon cutting in June. Cause I, I don't want it to be about us. It should be about the students yeah. and and having them share their story. There's some powerful stories. It's amazing. I bet. And so we, we, we get excited about it, but yeah. yeah. That is really cool to see that personal change. Mm -hmm. Like your, mm -hmm. your job was working. You're doing yeah. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Yep. Wow. Um, my other question is kind of about something we talked about earlier was that 
the the booklet, the CTE, like your business plan. Mm-hmm. What was that the called? Charter. 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 Yeah. Um, because that came from a school in Nampa and Caldwell that was already created. Was it pretty like smooth or was there hurdles with that? No, it was pretty smooth. And and that's a good point. And, and I, it is a a giant document, but most of it was able to be kind of replicated. Um, we did have to, there's large parts of the charter that, um, go into like the demographics and research of your own community. So obviously Hmm. I couldn't say like, it's not, it's different in Caldwell and Nampa. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we have a school in post falls too. And so that's completely different kind of Mm -hmm. stuff up there. Um, so Hmm. yeah, but a lot of it, like the language we use, um, next step ready, our core tenants as a school, um, is really a big part of that charter. And that's pretty much the same in each school's charter. charter. Um, but every community, every new school has a different kind of, um, spin based on where we are. Wow. So great. So if everything goes, I mean, like it is and yeah. keeps going well, like this could just continue to grow and Keep be an yeah, option for more people. They're, we're seeing, um, they're starting a project in Twin Falls now. Oh, wow. So there'll be another, that'll be the fifth Elevate. Um, I'm not sure the timeline there, but they they do, that is in the, they bought some land there. Cool. Um, yeah, and I, I, I think you'll see it continue to grow. Well, and this conversation isn't just happening in Idaho. I think we're seeing it nationally. Again, right, like, the last, I would say, even 15 years has been so much college, college, college. Yeah. So now we have a bunch of young adults who have a lot of debt and they are not employed <laughs> in whatever degree they chose mm-hmm. because they weren't sure. But it was like they were dutiful, right? You know, they yep. were just like, well, I'm supposed to go to school. We trusted you. You we, said we this was this the right thing to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> and and um, our, our trades are really lacking. I mean, yeah. that's what we have found talking with our, speaking with our industry partners. They're like, oh my gosh, mm-hmm. we could hire, you know, Ten five kids right here and we could hire five kids in this area. And like, we are desperate. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Workers We've seen that. so many yeah. shops where I'm like, we're walking around and there seems to be like a big empty space. I'm like, well, what's happening over there? I mean, all the action seems like, if we had five more welders or machinists, that would all be being used right now. Mm-hmm. It's not, and that would up our production. That would up our, we're so far behind. We can't take jobs. And so really the, the need is there, right? Yeah. Like we all know that. So it's exciting. Okay. So That's where really do exciting. people go? Mm-hmm. Tell us one more time to try and join your school. So our website is elevate two zero eight, like the area code. Okay. Dot okay. org. Oh, dot org. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, and yep. It's real simple to, you just click on enroll and then click on Idaho Falls and that's it. All right. Um, and cross like said, your fingers. Yeah, yeah. cross your fingers. Yeah. In the water. <laughs> and students that do live in District 93 get um, the first chance to be drawn since we're authorized by that district. 93. It's, yep. it's a benefit okay. to them. So mm-hmm. Hillcrest, Thunder Ridge, Bonneville, those three schools are the D93 high schools. And mm-hmm. they'll any kids in, in that district will go in first. Wow. So, and if anyone else generously in the community wanted to, to donate? donate to the school, we, yes. we would not say no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you have any extra forklifts? Well, you have a forklift. Got a forklift. No, no. Yeah. You know what we're really looking for is a dust collection system. I guess those are really expensive. Like for the shop? For yes. the shop. And I so see. like you, you install these big dust collection systems hmm. and it's one thing to like get the whole setup. They're kind of expensive, but it's another thing to install it. And, and I guess installing it's pretty easy, but if you hire like the big contractor to do it, it's a lot more expensive. And so any, like anybody that wants to help us with that, and we will like roll out the red carpet. You can name right. the shop after you. We can, or just money. And then we would purchase it. <laughs> right. so yeah. there's that. Um, and that's like, we, we budget, um, our school does have a two story slide from the second to the <laughs> first floor and mm-hmm. our, our project, we're working with ESI as our general contractor, okay. um, incredible dudes and everything's been under budget enough to this point that we, the slide was actually pulled from the budget for a while, hmm. but we just got word a couple weeks ago that the slides back in. <laughs> and so but a slide's like 30 grand, like that's so much money. That's crazy. So, yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh and God. so we're like, yeah. So we're like, but I'm like, okay, well, we could sell a sponsorship to the slide. So if somebody <laughs> wants to, then we'll put it towards a desk collection system. Yep. But yeah. So we're, we're always looking. It's for all for partners. the kids though. It is. It yeah. is, it is and, all for the kids. And like I said, it's an investment uh-huh. and we want, we want Spudnik to send their guys in every week and talk to our kids and recruit them and offer them jobs yeah and so that's what it's all about um for us like in our building we need more adults so every time we get ten thousand here twenty thousand there 
a grant, that's more money that we could put into people. So we can hire that. Which is more into students. Which is more so into we students. So we have it budgeted, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. to pay for we'll everything. We'll buy everything we need, but... But the more yeah. that's donated, then Absolutely. we can take that money and put it into like a paraprofessional or sure. again, another full-time teacher. Yeah. So. Or a, a semi-retired grandpa that wants to just <laughs> be in the shop for a few hours a day. We could pay them, you know, mm -hmm. to do that. And so we found that really successful at our other schools when we, when we do have those large donations come in or grants that we're able to put that money back into the adults that can connect with our kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So really yeah. important. Yeah. Wow. Very cool. Wow. Thank you so much yeah. for coming on our podcast today. This is such a cool school. Like you've heard a million times. I wish it existed yep. when I, I would be a welder in another life. There Things you go. would be different. Uh, right. <laughs> we would not be here right now. We're going to be volunteering there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. It. Well, you guys, we'd love to have you yeah. guys. I'll just stand there with the vacuum kids. to get dust out of the air. Right. Right. In the yeah. meantime. <laughs> yeah. Until we get our, our dust collecting yeah. system. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'll just fan out the dust. And there you go. It's like, this is not what we meant. <laughs> oh. okay. well, that'd be awesome. Well, make sure and go and sign up for your, your kids to go to Elevate Academy. Yes. yes. We want them. Someone get them a dust collector. Yes. And then make sure to just follow them subscribe to our podcast and i think that's yeah. all we have today hey, thank, oh, you so thank, thank you so much thank you so much thank you for coming thank you for your time okay bye, bye.